Welcome back to Dylan of Sid Meier's Civilization IV Colonization, where we continue the conquest of the Americas of the Dutch. One gets to be sent to Beaverton, another one gets to be sent to Baytown. Good lord, I trained this dude in two turns, that's amazing. This colonist right here that I just put in, that's incredible. This expert farmer I'm actually going to use to found another settlement right here that used to be a English settlement, and we'll do some farming there, might as well. I'm kind of running out of places for my farmers, which is why we're going to pretty rapidly expand to new settlements in not too long. This converted native, we're going to bring him to Ontario, have him do some lumberjacking. I think I need to keep most of my money on hand for training people, so I'm not going to buy anything at the moment. I need another expert sugar planter to go up to Gamble, so I'm going to train that, and of course going to build, just always building more wagon trains, just constantly. Stockade is done in Detroit. Printing press makes a lot of sense, actually. Let's do a printing press next. Yeah, printing press, and then we'll go into a blacksmith shop right after that. We have two frigates to guard our shipping lanes now. We're going to build more frigates over time, but it'll take a little while. And then this colony, we're just going to call it Kansas, because that's all that Kansas does is grow corn for the most part. And we'll build... Nothing here, I think, but religion points. Why not? And farmer will do farm things. Kansas can also do some... Oh, wait, no, that got stolen from Denver. I need to fix that. I was going to say they could do some silver farming, but all they're going to export is, like, maybe lumber, probably just ore and food. Nothing else will go on here, really. Our frigate could get its first kill in the form of the French Carol, but we're just going to do, declare war on the Spanish in order to reach it, because they're not going to give us open borders. In which case, we're just going to sink the Spanish Caravel instead, and get some promotions. Well, start working towards promotions at least. First one down, very good. And then, French Caravel, sink that one too. Not a single point of damage, just like, that's what I like to see. Got the printing press in Detroit. Next up is going to be that blacksmith shop. Got two other statesmen trained in Beaverton. One of them is going to go not into Beaverton. One will go to Baytown. The other one, probably send him up to Detroit. Mm, let's think about this. So I'm building the military to attack the Spanish. The issue is that a merchant man moves four per turn. Theoretically, to get up to the Spanish, it takes about nine to eight turns. Like eight to ten turns, we unload, we siege it down, then we have to fight, then we have to win, and then we have to extract the colonists, so that's going to be like 40 to 50 turns. We have 99 turns left. I'm not sure that we actually have enough time, honestly. I think our best bet is going to be to hunker down and then get ready for the upcoming War of Independence. We'll grab the next religious founding father to strengthen our relations with the natives further, They'll also give us plus three crosses for every town hall, which will naturally increase our religious point generation. And then I think we switch over to military point production to focus down Don Pedro. And then we just build up troops and then get ready to fight. We're already at 81% of our entire colonies supporting independence, and that includes all of our armies at what and that includes all of our armies. So I think we just uh, basically chill out. Maybe even leave the Spanish and the French alone and just come home. I think it's about time. Yeah, let's head on back home. We'll bring the privateer back too, might as well. He'll be helpful against the king's forces. The last time the king added troops to the REF, he added like 40 troops as well. So <laughs> he's, he's adding a lot of people every time now. So we're kind of under pressure to fight sooner rather than later and are running out of time, but we're still growing explosively. So I'm going to shut down the cannon production and then switch over to pumping out frigates like crazy. We got the armory built in Anchorage, now we're just going to focus on just building military points in all of our cities once I get the Founding Father, which should be this turn and the next turn. I'll leave the ones that I switched to military on military temporarily. Offloaded a bunch of goods, we need to keep money on hand to train people, so I'm not going to buy anything at the moment. You know what, instead of a frigate, we need to build a few more merchant instead. I'm kind of split here, so I can definitely build a military very rapidly at this point in time. And then I could probably fight the War of Independence not too long from now, because I'm growing 
super fast. Once I get Detroit set up, we'll be basically set. And then I need to get those. That's right, I need to get some gunsmiths too, before I forget about that. We have space for three. Let's check our education facilities. Training in one turn. One turn, one turn. So it's 500 gold plus... So 1,000 gold. And then... Which should be okay. So I need to keep 1,000 gold on hand. I need to get gunsmiths rolling here pretty soon. So let's buy two gunsmiths. That leads us to 1,600, which is just fine. And we're basically just arming soldiers at this point in time. Educating people in remembrance doesn't make sense anymore. It takes too damn long. Let's just make peace with the English. Why not? We'll make peace with the French. They don't have any money, unfortunately. And then we'll make peace with Samran Bolivar once he will speak to us again. We've got the blacksmith shop in Detroit set up. That doesn't mean that we need another blacksmith set up here. It means I need to remember to do that. Next up is going to be a newspaper. We could go immediately to Ironworks, but let's build the newspaper first. We'll take William Penn to make wars of the natives less likely. And to get those crosses in our settlements. We're up to 69% tax rate, which is fine. That actually helps us in a lot of ways. So I'm not too concerned about it. Alright, we finished the university in Beaverton. We might want to start building a shipyard here as well. I think that makes sense. Got the newspaper in Detroit. Next up is going to be the ironworks. Hopefully we'll get that done pretty soon. And we have a crap ton of goods to offload. We are going to need some money. We're not educating anybody at the moment. What I need is I need to get these gunsmiths loaded up. I need to get another gunsmith loaded up. Then I need a blacksmith send you off and then you could probably use some more miners we'll load them up let's grab let's make another tool facility we're basically going hard on tools and just guns and getting ready i think we're no longer going to expand the number of colonies we have we're just going to build an army and then we're going to fight more gunsmiths send them back we grow a ton of people every single turn now Right now our army consists of 18 soldiers, 5 dragoons, 9 cannons, 4 warships. That's going to explode over the next couple of turns. I don't think that we'll wait 96 turns. I think we'll get it done a lot faster than that. So our borders have expanded so much that Sitting Bull is just going to give up the settlement right here. So we will not be going to war with them, thankfully. I do not want to fight them at this point in time. I tell you what, we'll set up a tool production facility in remembrance as well we might as well go ahead and do that we can generate enough liberty bells that we can support plenty more people in there and we are building frigates pretty effectively let's keep on doing that there we go dom pedro the first plus 50 percent great general emergence all troops get veteran one and minuteman one mounted gunpowder that can get those so now that we're done with exploration military trade that leaves us with just politics which we actually finished too so there's only religion, so if we build anything now, it should just be religious points. The question is, do I even care though? Getting a free schoolhouse in every settlement is not a bad thing, but it's unimportant at this point in time. Getting more crosses for every church and cathedral doesn't matter. Getting liberty bells for church and cathedral doesn't matter. Getting outer statesmen doesn't really matter either. So now, instead of military points, kind of might as well just build something else, but there's not much else to build. We got that load of gunsmiths and a blacksmith. They're gonna head off immediately over to Detroit. Just gotta get them set up. Although Detroit does not have spaces for them, right? The gunsmiths are actually going to Hammerinville, that's right. So gunsmiths go to Hammerinville, extra blacksmith goes to Detroit, or we can just keep him right here in Remembrance. That means they gotta ship ore into Remembrance, which is fine. It's not a big deal. Now let's send this blacksmith over to Detroit. We'll finish up the tool production there. Uh, here we go. So let's unload these dudes right here. We've got some blacksmiths. They'll get set up in the blacksmith shop. They won't be able to do much immediately. I'll have to ship some ore in, but the trade wagons will naturally take care of that on their own. And the ore miners, I'm going to send them up to... Let's send them up to Hammerinville, actually. Give them that. Send them on their way. Got another gunsmith. This gunsmith, I think I'm going to send him over to England's Folly. We don't have any money, so we have to train lumberjacks instead of anybody else. Might as well do that. We are going to need them. And then let's build a... I was going to build a fur trading post in this town. But I'm kind of thinking that 
well, let's go ahead and set it up. We have a boatload of furs to process. It'll get, it'll make us more money over time. Let's put a warehouse next though. Got a bunch of money on hand. Got to think about what we want to spend it on. Got to keep some money for training people. Some more elder statesmen. Not a whole lot of money though. Replace the converted native with a lumberjack in Beaverton. Converted native is actually just going to get set up doing fur trapping right there to help offset our furs. And then we really want to get another fur production facility set up in uh, Baytown. We'll ship this lumberjack that we just trained out to Glitter, Glitter Hill. Might as well. And then we're going to need some more tools in various places. Really, we need more tools, period. They aren't getting shipped out nearly as much as they need to be. I might just buy a boatload of tools and bring them in. I think that makes a lot of sense. We don't really need so many people now, although I would like to get maybe another gunsmith. I think that makes sense. Let's buy another gunsmith. Let's buy a couple ranchers. Maybe one rancher. Let's see where I got space. I got one space here. I don't need that many Dragoon soldiers are very effective on the old defensive terrain that's now better for us. Just because of our promotions, not because of any ambush bonus. More ranchers doesn't make sense to me in my opinion, so let's just load these guys up. I'm gonna bring home a absolute crap ton of tools. The tools we can process into guns and ships. Everybody goes home, everybody grabs some more stuff. Blacksmith shop will get done pretty soon. Remembrance, we're going to switch over to producing more frigates. We're going to go back and forth as we receive tools. The AI wagon trains don't move until all of my units have moved and then they do their thing. But it's kind of annoying. There might be a button that I can press to make them move faster though or sooner. I think I may have heard of that in Civilization 4, but I can't quite remember. Let's get the printing press built next maybe in Baytown. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you for the tax increases. All right, let's get the gunsmiths set up, doing their thing. Let's get the ore miners doing their thing too, making some more ore for everybody else in the colonies to make use of. And we are pretty well set in Hammerinville, I'd say. We can't always build a frigate in England's Folly, which is having issues with gun and tool deliveries, so we'll build a magazine in the meantime. Let's grab ourselves another... I think this one might be a fur trader. Let's do an Elder Statesman. I can't do a shipyard, any toll, that's okay. There's lots of other things I'm doing in the background too now. I think we'll just temporarily do maybe merchant man production. Let's go with that. That outer statesman goes over to Baytown. Rancher that arrived from Europe is going to go over to England's Folly. I actually got that shipyard built pretty decently quickly. Going to switch over from merchant man to instead building a frigate instead. And we're going to be pumping out the frigates like crazy, as well as the soldiers. Cannons are going to get their butts kicked on the defensive. Dragoons are pretty good attacking into open land, but I've left most of these forests alone along the coast, so that when the king comes, we'll be able to just obliterate him in the forest. Since we no longer have any fear of the natives, I'm going to condense my military from the west over to the east as well. The king should focus primarily upon our earliest cities, so like Remembrance, England's Folly, and Gamble. We can just focus our soldiers over there for the most part, and then fight. I'm going to road up these forests over here before we start the war along the eastern coast, as well as basically road this whole area. We're up to 23 soldiers, 5 dragoons, 9 cannons, 6 warships, and the REF is 164 regulars, 83 regular Dragoons, 69 already, 46 warships. It's a lot of people. It is a lot of people. As far as I know, the regulars aren't that much more powerful than our people. They have veteran 1 and 2, so they have a default plus 20% strength. But their soldiers still have a base 3 strength, pretty sure. And their Dragoons still have a base 4 strength. Now they do get plus 25% settlement attack, but they also don't receive defensive bonuses. So we should slaughter them simply by attacking into the forest and things like that. Got that ironworks in Detroit made, which is wonderful. We're not going to focus on guns production here too much. What we will do though is we will build an armory to get some free guns rolling, might as well. And then Baytown, might as well just build a stockade at this point. Offload a whole bunch of goods. Now I gotta think about what I wanna get, whether that's tools or more people. 
We actually need some more ore miners for Detroit, so we're going to pick up two ore miners for Detroit. Pick them up. I don't think we're going to do a training any more people at this point in time. We have one person left in education. They'll be done in four turns, so I'm not too concerned about them. They can become something else, like a farmer. We have enough statesmen that we're pretty well set. This gunsmith's going to go down to England's Folly. Let's grab ourselves another blacksmith for remembrance. And then... I think we could probably use one more gunsmith. So we'll pick up the... Gunsmith. We've got another frigate built in remembrance. I think what we're going to do is just going to focus down hard on more frigates constantly. Stockade and Baytown. Nothing else is probably really necessary here. I was going to build fur trading, but we're just running out of time. So let's just build a printing press, maybe? No, we're working on that already, that's right. Let's put an armory for some more guns production. Alright, send these dudes back, I don't need most of y'all. Get you on the boats. Send you back. Yeah, those are from, like, last turn. I keep... So much happens constantly that it's overwhelming sometimes. Pretty much all of my colonies have built it a store of 100 guns. So I'm going to have them all export all their guns, but keep 100 guns behind. Because when we declare independence, we should be able to get two indentured servants in every single colony that we have. And then that will allow us to arm even more soldiers pretty much instantaneously. Ooh, Sushi City actually needs a warehouse. Look at a good warehouse built immediately. And then we need to export guns that are extra. Build an armory instead. Got the magazine in England's Folly. I don't think that we should focus on arsenals. We should just focus on building frigates like crazy. Same thing in Beaverton. Frigates, frigates, frigates. Got the arsenal in Hammerinville. That is wonderful. Now, probably not much more for them to build, actually. Just build some wagon trains, why not? Armory in Detroit. Next up is going to be... Probably just... Maybe wagon trains. Not a whole lot else that we can do with the hammers and the other colonies. This converted native. Probably gonna send him over to... Anchorage to do some lumberjacking. 77% tax rate. Ugh. In case you're wondering what we do in terms of manufactured goods, this is pretty much one or two turns of production. Maybe two to three turns. Something like that. Alright, Gunsmith goes down to England's Folly that arrived from Europe. Blacksmith, you're gonna get set up in Remembrance. Right here. Ore miners, they get horses and they get to ride off towards Detroit. ASAP, we need as much ore income as we can possibly get. And then... There's one person in training. I don't care what they become at this point in time. It does not really matter to me. We're just gonna save all of our money for... Probably tools at this point in time, if we really need it. We generate a boatload of guns. I don't think we need to buy guns. Buying tools makes sense. We might even just buy some more gunsmiths. Get them set up elsewhere. Potentially in Beaverton. Right after we, yeah, we have a spot for them in Beaverton. So let's buy some more gunsmiths. So there's one, and there's two. They'll get set up in Beaverton. And we should be pumping out like a frigate every single turn, basically. Meanwhile, the REF is up to 53 warships. We have 28 soldiers, 8 dragoons. We're not building any more cannons anymore. Let's actually build a magazine in Detroit. Why not? Got the armory in Baytown. Next up is not going to be anything important. Let's just build a dock. I trained up the education person to be a fisherman. Let's grab another gunsmith. So that's 2,109 gold remaining. Might want to get another ore miner somewhere. I think that makes sense. Not sure what our ore production is, but we're not having enough. So let's get ore miners. And then what? Let's take a look at the colonies. I think we'll just go ahead and grab some more ore, not ore, but tools, and bring that back as is. And then we shall return. So, looking at the mana war, they have four movement, which means that if they spawn right on the spawn location here, they would be able to move close enough to our coast to offload troops onto the forest right here, just north of Remembrance, or the forest just south of Campbell. They would not be able to get down to... England's Folly to offload onto the plains, which don't have any anti-defensive terrain that we can make use of. So the main threat is going to be right here. Or we can simply just form a line just like this with multiple thick 
and then prevent the Mana Wars from being able to land at all, which I think is going to be my strategy. We're going to just pump out the frigates. We have plenty of time. We can make about... I think we make a frigate every three turns per colony, so that's a frigate every single turn. They have 53 warships. We're up to nine warships. We should be able to match that, which is incredible. And we can, and we can continue to produce while we fight. We just got an immigrant. That's the first time in a long time. It's amazing. It's a free colonist too. We must actually be producing quite a few crosses from our town halls now. We've got a magazine in Detroit. Next up is going to be an arsenal, and then we're also going to build. I'll take the schoolhouse. Screw it. Why not? We're also going to build a magazine in Beaverton. And the two ore miners that just arrived from Europe are going to go up to Gamble, and they're going to set up there. Gamble has been producing ore naturally from the Colony Square for its entire lifetime, actually. And then the gunsmiths are going to get sent down to Beaverton. Offload a crap ton of goods, get almost nothing for our money, that's fine. At this point, let's grab some more gunsmiths to put into Detroit. Load them up on the Merchantman, send them off, grab some tools in the meantime, and head on out. 82% taxes, alright bro. I'm going to start building a blacksmith shop in Campbell. I am going to need more blacksmiths in order to supply the tools that I need now that I think about it. I've gotten a lot of gunsmiths, and that does cost us in a lot of ways. I have more units in the game, knows what to do with down here at the bottom, so I have to actually move. You've seen the arrow keys here, it's pretty funny. The gunsmiths that just arrived are going to get sent over to Detroit right away. We need more ore miners, so we'll pick up some more ore miners. We also need more blacksmiths, so we'll pick up some more blacksmiths if I could afford them. So ore instead, get on the boat, head back home. I'm going to move some carpenters from Baco, which has now got nothing else to do with the carpenters, over to Gamble. We're going to turn Gamble into a fourth shipyard city. And this guy gets to do lumberjacking to supply lumber for the shipyard cities. Ah uh, yes, I am going to actually need a lumber mill in Gamble to make them into a proper shipyard city, so we'll put a lumber mill. And then, we might be looking at Baytown for shipyard city number 5. Yeah, let's make Baytown shipyard city in number 5. So they'll start working on dry dock immediately. That means that we have to modify their imports and exports, of course. Which is A-OK. -okay. Carpenters in Rome Central are going to get pulled. We no longer need the carpenters to hang out there. Both of them are going to get sent down to Baytown right away. So we're up to 36 soldiers, 10 dragoons, 14 warships. Not a big increase, but do keep in mind that we're going to get two soldiers for every single settlement that we have, and we have about 15 settlements right now. So that's 30 soldiers on top of what we have, so that's more like 66 soldiers total that are just secretly waiting. Because we're going to take all mana free, not slavery. Slavery is stupid in this one. Like, why would you get 50% more raw goods when you don't need 50% more raw goods? That's stupid. Just get the soldiers. 85% taxes. Oof. We produce enough gold that it really doesn't matter though. I kind of think we almost produce too many guns actually. We have a huge gun production rate. Like, we're sitting at 1,534 guns. That was almost 2,000. We need more tools production, so I'm going to build a ironworks in Remembrance instead of a frigate right away. And we just built two frigates. That is wonderful. We're going to super accelerate towards victory. Shipyard in Baytown is coming up next. We make about two to three soldiers every single turn. Pretty close to that. We could probably set up some more uh, food production, actually. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. Alright, alright. Blacksmith goes to Gamble. Ore Miner goes to Gamble. Another Ore Miner goes to Kansas. Yeah, Kansas. And the other Ore Miner also goes to Kansas. We got an armory in Denver. We'll go ahead and set up a stockade just in case. I have to alter the build order in Gamble to be warehouse because we need more storage space and then lumber mill and then blacksmith shop and that should be good. I also need the blacksmith to be in the blacksmith shop, not in the rum shop. <laughs> and a bunch of goods to offload and not much money to make, but let's grab two more blacksmiths. Load them up, head on home. Hey, the Sioux are being real nice to us. This is the first gift I've ever gotten all game. 26 tobacco. Thanks so much, Sue. Thank you, Sid and Bull. No one is making any Founding Father points anymore. Everyone, if they have nothing to do, just makes wagon trains. There's no reason to build anything else. 
unless it's building like frigates. The Sioux are giving up their village of Asante. Our boys have simply pushed them out completely. That's fine. That's much better than going to war with them. And the Incans are also doing a similar thing with this city, which is unfortunate because we have a mission there. Ironworks is done in remembrance. We're going right back to frigate production. Shipyard is up in Baytown. Frigate production begins immediately. We got a warehouse in Kansas. We're going to get a printing press up in not too long. Let's take care of that. Sor Juana is offering to join us. Gives us plus three crosses per church and cathedral. We don't have any of these buildings. I, well, could build these things. At least a church in like most places, but crosses are basically useless. No, thank you. 90% taxes. Oof. All right. The two blacksmiths we just got from Europe are going to get sent to Gamble. I need to look around and see if I can find one more carpenter to steal from somewhere. Let's actually take the one from Hammerinville. Send him over to Gamble. We got a little bit of gold to spend, but I'll decide what to do at the end of the turn. I think what we're going to need is we're going to need more ore miners. So we'll pick those up and bring those back home. After that, we might just focus purely on food. So... I also need to go through my colonies right now and make it so that the major colonies that are already set aren't producing more Liberty Bells than they really need to be. At least I need to find some people to move into Gamble. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of available people. I'm making 103 Liberty Bells right now in Hammerinville, which means that we could support 25 people. Let me see what happens when I pull these statesmen out to see if I can push them over to Gamble instead. That puts us at 53. 53 divided by 4 is 13, so I need to leave one in. This one extra statesman is going to go to Gamble. Let's check Remembrance. And Remembrance is having issues with ore. Our biggest problem right now is ore production. We make 139 Liberty Bells, that means that we can support 34. If I pull one statesman out, that brings us to 111. We can support 27. Let's see what happens if I pull out another one. 83 divided by 4 is 20.75. That's not quite enough. I'd prefer to leave one in. Alright, Elder Statesman goes to Gamble. Those two Elder Statesmen by themselves should be pretty effective at getting Gamble set up. And we should be set for those Statesmen. However, I do have a bunch of Statesmen here that I can pull. Let's pull one here. I'll make him a scout, actually, so that he can get to Gamble a little bit quicker. And that should be good. I'm not too worried about the size of the REF. We're up to 46 soldiers, plus 30 from every settlement total. Puts us at 76. We have plenty of dragoons, plenty of horses, plenty of guns. We make a warship like every single turn. We probably can't match the RAF's number of warships, but we can probably get pretty close. I've got 73 turns at most. I think I'm just going to push on through those turns. And I, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's bring down. We don't want to be producing too many Liberty Bells. We no longer have a reason to make a crap ton of them. So it's going to be better for us to slow down our bell production slightly. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot of places that we can slow down on bell production. We could slow down here for sure. Let's pull that one out. I've gone through my colonies and I've pulled out the people that I can pull out. There was only a few outer statesmen, but the ones that are remaining, I'm going to set up some new colonies to produce food for us. I'm going to build one down where I plan to build the ore mine, right there. We'll also build a colony up here to produce a boatload of food. We've got the blacksmith shop built in Gamble. Next up, we're going to go immediately into Ironworks. Settled this city. What shall we call it? I'll just call it Wyoming. We'll build a warehouse first. We don't need much there in reality. The Sioux actually claimed this land. Uh, let's piss them off slightly. Let's call this Farmville. Why not? It's about time Farmville got some proper recognition. Never really got to get used in the classic playthrough. First we'll build a warehouse, of course. We got some more ore miners arrived from Europe. We're going to equip them with horses as soon as I can get to them. One ore miner goes up to Hammerinville. Another ore miner is going to go over to Wyoming. Yep. We got some money on hand. I think what we're going to be better off doing is buying tools. Well. Holy crap, we generate a lot of crosses. 67 per turn, wow. Huh. Maybe some cross production wouldn't be stupid after all. Yeah, let's just pick up a bunch of tools to bring that back home. I think we'll call it good for that one. 94% taxes, good lord, we make almost no money whatsoever now trading with Europe. Ouch. 
Since taxes are so damn high, I might as well see what I can get from the natives at this point in time. So one ship is going to take some cigars up to the Sioux village up here. I'd like to sell some coats somewhere, but I can't reach Tiwanaku. Machu Picchu just wants guns. We could. I'd love to hear any feedback you have about the video in the comments below. I'm always looking to improve. If you enjoyed the video, giving it a like would help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.